Greetings everyone. Once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, I'm Advocate William Matsilo. I want to thank very much all those who have been part of this journey. Thank you for commenting, thank you for liking, for subscribing. And most importantly, thank you for pressing the notification button so that when there is a new video uploaded, you are aware of it. Today, I'm going to be sharing the word of God. I've entitled my message, Seven Things That God Hates. Somebody was saying, that God hates. Yes, there are things that God hates. God is love. God loves us. God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. When you read the Bible, it says things that God detests. Things that God regards as abominable. You know, when you read the Bible in 2 Timothy chapter 3, from 16 to 17, it encourages us that when we share the word, when we preach the word, we must share the whole truth, not just part of the truth. We must share the whole counsel of God. We mustn't just tell people how nice it will be when God bless them. Does God bless his people? Yes, he does. Does God answer prayer? Yes, he does. But in the process of God doing things for us, God is also interested in who we are, in our character, in us being molded. That is why the Bible in the second Timothy chapter 3, 16 to 17, it says all scripture is, is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, all scripture. So we are not selective when we preach or when we teach the word of God. This word of God is meant to teach us the truth. And it continues to say, all scripture is empowered by God and is useful for teaching the truth for rebuking error. Yes, even when there is error, the word of God rebukes us or must rebuke us. That is why, you know, I usually say to people, when the preacher is preaching, you are listening to the word. It's a word that you may regard as harsh. Don't say, oh, I wish so and so was here to come and hear. No, the mere fact that you are the one that is there, you it means that it is your word. It is not so and so's word. Maybe so and so can listen or encounter that word at a later stage if so and so needs that word. But for now, it's you. The Bible, the Bible says the word of God, all scripture, the word of God, everything in the word of God is for teaching us the truth. It's for rebuking error. You see, that is why even the Bible in James says the word of God, it's like a mirror. You, you look at yourself in the mirror and you see where's the problem with me what and you correct whatever is not if the makeup is not but as soon as you leave the mirror the bible says some people they forget how they look at so it is very important that when we we read the word you must be able to say god speak to me i am listening and if it's the word that rebukes take it with humility and correct yourself because the Bible says it is for rebuking error. Error. I beg your pardon. It is for correcting faults. What is it that we, we, you and I are not doing right? The word of God is also for correcting us, not just for blessing us. And it's for giving us instruction for right living. What is it that God expects of me as a child of God? How should I live? How should I co conduct my relationships? How should I treat people? How should I treat my family members? How should I treat the people of God, people that I work with, people that I go to church with, people that I minister to, people that I oversee? The Bible guides us in that regard, right living. How do I correct, conduct myself in relationships, even in the so-called romantic relationships? How do I conduct myself as a Christian? Do I do everything 
that people who are not Christians do in those relationships. It says it is for giving instruction for right living so that the person who serves God, you see, the word is for the person who serves God, so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deed in order for you to serve God, in order for you to be able to do every kind of good deed, you have to be qualified, fully qualified, because you know what the word says, and you have to be equipped. So now, what are these seven things that God hates, that God detests, that are an abomination to the Lord? The first one, according to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. It says, there are seven things that the Lord hates and cannot tolerate. You see, this is the good news trans translation. It's not just things that God hates. He also cannot tolerate. The first one is haughty eyes. Haughty eyes. The other translation says a proud look. Pride. You know, the Bible says, Pride came before the fall. Pride is associated with the devil himself because, because out of pride is how he lost his position, his position of, that he was given to by the Lord. God does not like pride. He does not like a haughty. It's one of the things that he hates and that God cannot tolerate. A proud look, a haughty look. God does not tolerate pride. God hates it and he does not tolerate it. Number two, a lying tongue. What does it mean? It's very obvious, purposely deceiving somebody. You know that what you are saying is not the truth, but you are saying it. The Bible says don't lie because God hates it. God hates a tongue that lies. Number three, hands that kill innocent people. This talks of a murderer. God does not like people, God does not like hands that kill innocent people because this has very serious consequences. Somebody has just shot left their purpose. They leave children behind because they've been killed. Inno and they are innocent for that matter. Number four, mind that thinks up wicked plans. This mind is a mind that is plotting evil. You know, people usually say a, a mind that is not busy is the devil's play, its play field. You are busy seated, seated there plotting evil. Your thoughts must be thoughts of God, godly thoughts. That is why somebody in the Bible says, let your thoughts let my thoughts and my meditation be acceptable unto you. God is aware of what we are thinking about. If he was not aware, that he wouldn't say God hates a mind that thinks up wicked plans. Because when you, when you are thinking, God is aware of your thoughts. That is why even when, when you are sentenced in a court of law, they talk about premeditated murder. That premeditated murder has very serious sentence, more than just murder or culpable homicide. They see that this, this person strategize. If you have, you have a strategic a thinking, it's not for you to use it for wicked, wicked or evil things. God does not like a mind that thinks up evil plans. There's a music playing upstairs, um, out, outside, but it doesn't matter. So our thoughts, our meditation must be acceptable to God. We must think clean thoughts. We must think thoughts that are aligned with the word of God. Number five, fit that hurry off to do evil. You are rushing somewhere. Where are you going? When you look at number one, it talks about it's mainly our faculties 
the parts of our body, haughty eyes. God doesn't like haughty eyes. Lying tongues is your tongue. Number three, hands that kill innocent people. Number four, it's your mind. Number five, it's your feet. Now, all these faculties that have been mentioned from number one to number five, we should surrender them to God. We should be able to say, God, let me only see what you see. Your eyes should be used to see what God sees. What is it that you see when you look around? Do you see that needy person? Do you see that person who has a desperate situation? Are you able to help that person even if they don't ask? What is it that you see? Your tongue. What do you use your tongue for? Are you able to say, God, let me speak as your oracle. We should be speaking as the oracle of God because the Bible says our language must be seasoned with salt. When we, when we speak, we must bring healing. We must use our faculties, the faculties of our body. We must use them positively. We must use them to, to glorify God. We must use them to serve God. You know, it is the Bible again in, in James, which says that the same tongue that you speak positive things with, you cannot say negative things with. I cannot be preaching the word and then insulting with the same tongue. So how do we use the faculties of our body? The hands. May our hands be the hands of God. May our hands be the hands that God will, will use as a point of contact to deliver healing and deliverance to his people, to touch his people. Not only for spiritual exercise, but even to cook, even to clean, to do positive things. Not for our hands to be used to kill innocent people. Our minds. Let us th sit there and think about these things. Things that are true. Things that are noble. Things that are of good report. It goes on and on. Let's think positive things. Let's think and strategize. How am I going to serve God? How am I going to do this one for the glory? How am I going to serve them? Think positive thoughts, not negative thoughts. Your feet, be careful where you go. Are your feet the feet that brings good news? Do you rush to go and bring good news with your feet? Or is it that feet that hurry to do evil? Now, number six of things that God does not, does not like. It's a witness who tell one lie after another. This person just keeps on lying. There are some people who lost jobs because somebody lied about them. There are people who are in prison today because somebody lied about them. Somebody gave a false witness about them. When you are pl placed in a corner, to lie about somebody. Do you know the consequences of, of giving a witness? That of being that witness, that lie, telling one lie after another. God hates it. Don't forget that we are talking about the seven things that God hates. God hates people who gives false witness about others. And the last one, the one that makes me very emotional is the number seven. Someone who stirs up trouble among friends, among family members, among church goers. You know, today there are people who have, are not friends because somebody spread a lie. Somebody saw a discord. Even in the church, there are churches that are broken today because somebody lied. Somebody influenced people. You know, I usually say to people, if you are a member of a church, if you are no longer interested, 
Just go peacefully. Leave the church intact. Don't go around influencing other people to leave because you are leaving. You will be in trouble because you are sowing discord. Not only to the family, not only among friends, but even to the church of God. There are family members today who are no longer in good terms because somebody went and quoted the other and said, sometimes even lie, to say so and so said this about you, but don't ask. Now you can imagine if you are told not to ask and you are, you are looking at this person and you're like, hmm, I think I know what you said about me. You don't even know whether this person was telling the truth because you were told not to ask. God hates someone who stirs up trouble among friends. Don't stir trouble among friends, among family, among co-workers. You see, everybody hates you because of one person who is busy spreading rumors about you, false rumors about you. You know, when you look at all these seven things that God hates, that God cannot tolerate, which is haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill, mind that thinks evil, feet that hurry to do evil, a witness who tells lies, and finally someone who stirs up trouble. When you look at these things, the common element, the running thread in these seven things is about how you treat people. It's about treatment of people. And you know, when I was meditating about this word, I was thinking, I remember the word that says that most two important commandments, love the Lord. And number two, love your neighbor. The two commandments. These are the most important and they cover everything. So if you are able to, if you love God, you will not do things that God hates. You will not do things that God cannot tolerate. If you love God, you will obey God. You will love, you will love, you will love rather your neighbor. Because if you love your neighbor, you cannot do all these things. I hope you have learned something from this word. I wanted to say, I hope you are blessed, but I, I, I don't want to use the word, you are blessed. If you are blessed, it's okay. But the most important thing is, I hope you have learned from this word in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19, about the seven things that God hates and that God cannot tolerate. You know, years ago when I was reading the word and I came across this chapter in Proverbs, I was like, wow, I don't want to be on the wrong side of God. If God hates these things, I don't want to do them because I want to be on the Lord's side. You know, this reminds me of Moses when he was asking the children of Israel, who wants to be on the Lord's side? The Bible says the Levites gathered together. I want to be on the Lord's side. You want to be on the Lord's side. So if you want to be on the Lord's side, don't do the seven things that God hates and that God cannot tolerate. Thank you very much for listening to this word. May this word build us so that we should be fully qualified and equipped to serve the purposes of God in our generation. Thank you very much. You are blessed and you are highly favored. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press the notification bell. Thank you.